Beck Medical Secretary telling people they are still on their waiting list but because of Covid everything had to be pushed back. University Coventry is working through a backlog of patients who've been delayed by the Covid pandemic. The Trust has 50,000 people waiting for treatment, 5,000 of whom have been delayed by over a year. Some have decided to go private according to Beck. Coventry Hospital serves over 1 million people from across the Midlands. As a major trauma centre, they admit an average of 121 emergency patients each day. As a result of theatre staff redeploying to critical care during the pandemic 13 of the 32 theatres are still out of action. Instead of performing 80 operations a day, they're achieving just under 52 thirds of their normal capacity. Tom Consultant Cardiac Surgeon says he understands the goal is to get back to where we were pre-COVID, but that's not going to happen overnight. The cardiac department now has 40 patients waiting at home for heart surgery. The cardiac ward, 28-year-old Drew, has been experiencing severe stomach pains. After several phone consultations with the GP and a blood test, Drew was told to go to hospital for further investigations. Tom says thinks he has abnormal connections from this aorta to his atrium. His liver function was deteriorating, so he needs to have an urgent repair of that. Tom tells Drew the test has shown that he basically got an abnormal connection and that's causing your right heart to get overflowed with blood. That's then backing up to his liver. His liver functions tests now are deteriorating which is not a good sign. It's not going to be an easy fix according to Tom because every organ system in your body can have problems. On the same ward, another cardiac patient was meant to be the priority for surgery tomorrow. 73-year-old Brain has an infection in his heart, but he will now lose his theater slowly too, Drew. However, that means an urgent orthopedic case is now in doubt. A young lad in her 20s and her hip is dislocated, she's in agony says Richard, an orthopedic surgeon. 23-year-old Nosreen has had physical and learning difficulties since having a stroke as a child. At the age of 5, Nosreen fell ill. After a successful liver transplant, her family hoped she would lead a healthy life. But six months later, she had a stroke, leaving her paralyzed on one side and with impaired. Nosreen's hip pain began before the pandemic and a referral was made to see a specialist. Drew was one of four surgical patients across the hospital that day. However, there is only one bed available. Does she critical care consultant views ITU bed? Management, it's like that game you used to have when you were a kid, where you used to slide tiles around a little board to make a picture. One title has to move before another one can move into where it was, then you move another title and move another tile into that space. This is because the space to treat patients is so tight. There is no big space where you can drop patients in. However, Four different can have up to four different nursing requirements. After the morning meeting, operational meeting will decide which of the patients needing critical care can go ahead. Clara's associate director said these cases are very challenging, she doesn't know when this will end when asked if this feels like a lottery. Richard is trying to convince Clarion Duncan chief medical officer that, that she is at risk but the hospital says it is not more important than cancer patients that need care right now which is true but is affecting her everyday life. Drew surgery underway. Surgeons don't know what conditions his heart is in until they start to repair the abnormal connection to his aorta. Ramesh cardiac surgeon says his heart is 10 times bigger than what this young man should have, more than 15 times what a got an abnormal connection and that's causing your right heart to get overflowed with blood. That's then backing up to his liver. His liver functions tests now are deteriorating which is not a good sign. It's not going to be an easy fix according to Tom because every organ system in your body can have problems. On the same ward, another cardiac patient was meant to be the priority for surgery tomorrow. 73-year-old Brain has an infection in his heart, but he will now lose his theater slowly too. The hip replacement now in place, Nosreen is taken to recovery before going to intensive care where she will recover. 
Findings enough theater slots for cardiac patients is proving to be a challenge, which is driving up the number of patients waiting. On the department's operating lists, despite COVID infection rates falling in the local community, there are still 81 COVID positive patients in the hospital. Lynn is part of an outreach team who monitor the sickest COVID patients on the ward. To check if they need escalating to critical care, Lynn is alerted by an app when a patient is showing key markers of deterioration. Lynn has been called to see 50 year old David, whose oxygen need has increased steeply overnight. David was just weeks away from having COVID vaccination when he tested positive for the virus. An ITU consultant had a second look at David. He had to speak to his wife with because he was scared of going down to ITU but needed to so he can get a better level of treatment. Since the start of the pandemic, the trust has had to expand critical care by 200% to cope with demand. Eva said they are still admitting patients for COVID as much as they are still trying to move ahead they still have to treat the ones who are coming in. It's early March and there are 26 seriously ill COVID positive patients in care. Beds, the trained staff to go with them, are in short supply. David in critical care four days ago. Laid on the front to increase the air flow to his lungs. Eva says he's doing much better compared to what he was a few days ago. David condition was deteriorating he's was put into an induced coma. He's now on a number of medications too. Trying to prevent respiratory failure. Bernice says critical care consultant looking says they are watching him suffer in hope of solutions. Sandra Senior Sister, Vaccination Clinic is a member of the Trust Vaccination Center and was the first in the world to begin administering a COVID vaccine. The center vaccinates hospital staff, outpatient, healthcare professionals from the local area, although the vaccine is not compulsory for NHS workers. Christina Associates says they had 31,750 vaccinated on that day. In addition there were 1,500 that had not taken the vaccine. Andy Chief Executive of NHS Trust what have concerns about staff not wanting the vaccine, especially in the BAME community. Achieving a high vaccine uptake among staff is crucial for the Trust's plan to restore all of its services back to normal. Lorna Modern Matron has been asked to solve the issue. Despite delivering over 31,000 vaccinations, one in five of the trust staff have chosen not to have their vaccination yet. To encourage staff uptake and answer any concerns, Sam is a clinical sister because she has sickle cell traits, does not want to put herself in a situation where she falls ill and really affects her if she wants to have more kids. Alistar Group Manager says because of COVID they don't have their main theatre sessions back because the staff are still on critical care. His job is to manage the cardiac waiting list and two other departments, each with their own seriously ill patients needing surgery. Two more patients with heart problems have deteriorated at home and are deemed in need of urgent surgery. But only one theatre slot is available. To help ease the pressure on Critical care, the Trust has decided to put a temporary cap on the number of beds available for some planned operations to just two a day. Surgeons from three departments are now vying for just two intensive care beds each day and must work amongst themselves who takes priority. Sandeep consultant neurosurgeon argues what his case says for upper GI, lower GI, different examples of medical procedures. Antonio Thoracic Surgeon argues about people who cannot not wait anymore. Between them, the surgeons have over 130 patients, categorized as needing surgery within a month. A doctor got hit seriously when a patient on his list died who had an eminently treatable revascularization of the heart.